Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you how to build a one choice slash pick a door machine. So you take these, there's the bow, armor, and sword. Start with the sword. So if you put the sword on this soul sand, which has a hopper beneath it, and you wait, you see it pops a sword out of the ground. Nice uh, enchanted sword is like a reward for a quest or something. So let's try getting the bow. Throw that in there and you wait. And you wait, and you can keep waiting because it's never going to come out. You only get one choice using this machine. So I'll show you how to build that. And then if we reload the map and try a different piece of paper, try the bow piece of paper. And you wait a minute, you'll see it'll give us the bow instead of the sword. And then if we tried throwing in any other piece of paper, it wouldn't work just like with the sword. So you only get one reward. So you can use this machine for any redstone application. So let's say you have five doors you want to open, but you only want one door to open at a time. I'll show you how I build these doors. It's just a torch on the bottom and then a block and then redstone on top and that powers three separate sticky pistons. Obviously these are too close together for a real map because the redstone would be showing but this is just for the demonstration. So let's say you wanted to open each one of these five doors but you didn't want them to be able to open more than one of them. I'll show you how to do that using this machine. So the first thing you need to do is set up your separate redstone inputs. In my case, that means I want to have one line of redstone, which is capable of, tr of opening each door. So the first thing I'll do is put five repeaters next to each other, because that's going to be where the, the machine, the one choice machine, plugs into. So for however many options you have, whether it's dispensers or doors, whatever, put that many repeaters down to start with. And then every other repeater, put another repeater in front of it, and that will make it so the signals don't overlap. Put a block in front of the end repeater on each line, just like this, alternating, and then put redstone underneath each block. So when those blocks get powered, they will power the redstone underneath them. And the whole point of this is to set up the signals so they don't contact each other in any way. You don't want any interference between signals. So each one should connect to an individual door without touching any other signals, and that requires just a little bit of redstone manipulation. Uh, repeaters are your friends. I'll do the one on the far right here, and then I'll fast forward to the rest so you can see how I did that without wasting too much time on that in the video. So you see, if I put a torch there, it opens the door, but I want the door to be closed by default. So I'll put another torch there, which turns off that torch. And now I can turn off this bottom torch, and when I do that, the door will open. So I'll connect that to the corresponding line, the one on the far right side, because it's the far right door. You know, I'm looking at it from the other perspective now. So if we put a torch here, you see it opens the far right door. Break that torch, and the door closes again. So I'll do the same thing for each door, and fast forward through it. And if you have redstone lines that are getting too close to each other, just use repeaters. And uh, obviously the more spread out each of your options are, the easier this becomes. So I'm going to fast forward to the rest of this. So this is all pretty basic stuff. Just connect each line to each redstone input from the, the plug we made earlier with all the repeaters. So five lines of redstone connecting to each of the five torches, which open each of the five doors. Got a little cramped here, so I powered this block and used repeaters. And then I got less cramps, so I can use more redstone again. So that's all finished. We have one line of redstone leading to each door. Put uh, torches down and test this out. That one opens the far right. Opens the middle. Opens the far left side. And if you put them all here, they'll all open. So the next part is we need to set up some sorters. And that will let us put in unique inputs. So before we build the sorter itself, we'll put comparators leading into each one of these repeaters. So five comparators behind each one of the repeaters, and you don't have to stagger them like we did with the repeaters themselves. They can just be in a straight line, just like that. And now put a hopper leading into each one of them. And now we're going to build the sorter. So I'll build a sorter in Lapis. This is the sorter I built in my other video. Um, I'll go over how to build in this video, but there are going to be five of them right up against each other, so it might be easier to watch with the other video if you don't understand how. Any sorter will work. You just want them to drain into these five hoppers. 
connect those to these comparators here. And then each one of these uh, hoppers has a torch beneath it, which is currently keeping it turned off or powered. Either way, same thing with a hopper. And then put your comparators up there. And then we'll put our repeaters down here, which will turn off the torches when the sorters reach the appropriate number of items, which is uh, 23 in this case. Put the redstone over the top here. That redstone will power the repeaters, which will turn off the torches. So that's all done. That's just five of those sorters right up against each other. Then we'll put our hoppers up on the top here, and these hoppers are where the items actually go into, the items that we're sorting for. So we'll do that we'll do that later. Just build the actual outline of the sorter right now. And the last thing you're gonna do, which isn't actually part of the sorter itself so much, is run a line of hoppers over the top. If you saw my automated shops video, this is basically like the junk line. So just it's just a straight line of hoppers going over the top of those ones where the items are actually going to go into. Very simple line of hoppers. There's an overview of the whole thing. Five sorters right next to each other. And if you were doing six choices, you'd have six sorters, etc. Just one sorter for each repeater. So next we'll have to make the items that we're going to sort for. I want these to be unique, so I'm going to get five named pieces of paper which is going to be door 1, door 2, 3, 4, and 5. And when I say unique, that means they don't stack with each other. So even though they're pieces of paper, you see these two, I'm putting them right on top of each other and they just swap places because they don't stack. So you can use any item which stacks to 64 for this. You can also use items which stack to 16, but you have to do it a little differently. So I'll put 22 in the top hopper with a total of 18 on the far left side. Or it does, you don't need 18, but that makes it easier. There should be more than one on the far left side. The total of 22, so I'll do that for each of these hoppers here. And normally, when I build sorters for like an automated shop, I would put another one in the bottom in the bottom hopper, but you don't want to do that here. Just put 22 and don't put the 23rd anywhere yet. So all the top hoppers have items in them, and these bottom hoppers are all empty. As soon as they get an item in them, that's what's going to open the door. So you see, these are all all have the pieces of paper, so let's put in door number four. Put that on the one on the far left, which isn't above any of the sorters. You see that opens door number four. And that works like that. The comparator tells when there's an item in there, and then if you take the item out, the door closes again. But we aren't done yet, because they could still open multiple doors. So if I throw in p pieces of paper 1 and 3 here, I'll open doors 1 and 3. You want to only open door number 1 because that's the first one they threw in. If you're okay with both doors opening, then you're done, your machine's finished, and you can stop watching and start using it. But we'll take out the items here, and I'll show you how to give them only one choice. And the easiest way to do that is to power this hopper right here, the hopper that the items actually go into. And the easiest way to do that is to power a block right next to this hopper. So we'll put that here, just like this. And this is what those blocks we placed earlier are going to be for. Put a repeater leading into that block, and redstone on each one of these blocks we placed earlier. These are the blocks that have redstone underneath them. And you want to just make this all one big net of redstone. So if any of the redstone gets powered, it all gets powered. So you see, if we throw one in here, it powers this whole top part, which turns off the hopper, but only powers one of the bottom parts, which only opens one door. Now if we throw another item in, it doesn't open the door. Even though the item disappeared, it just sits in this hopper here, so it can't go into the sorter, and that means it can't open the door. You can throw in more pieces of paper, it doesn't matter, it's not going to open. So that's pretty much the whole one choice machine right there, and then if you want to reset it, you can just take, not these items, but the items on this bottom row, Next to the comparators, if you want to reset it, just take that item out, and then it's ready to be used again. Uh, great for adventure maps or something like that. Quests. And this is the machine I used for the demo at the beginning of the video. So you can see how it works in a little bit of a different layout. You see I only have three options, so I only need three sorters. It has the armor and bow and sword papers. And three inputs leading to three different sides of the room. This is a little easier since I didn't have, wasn't as cramped of a space to work in. So each one of these signals goes out and powers 
one of these torches, which lets the dispenser release its item. And even though it looks like they're all connected to that block in the center, the block with the repeater on it, that's not the important block. It's these floating blocks that are important. This goes up there, and that cuts off this hopper. That's pretty much the whole thing. Uh, please like the video and subscribe for more tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Thank you for watching.